Всем привет! Uh, we are in a beautiful city Samarkand today. It's a pretty big one. I think it's second biggest city after Tashkent, the capital. So we are going to the main tourist places at the moment. Всем привет! Welcome to my channel! Захват камеры. Захват. Теперь это мой, мой YouTube канал. Вы скооперировались. Захватили мою камеру. Напишите в комментариях, если вам хочется, чтобы я вел канал. Напишите. Пожалуйста, напишите. So first of all, we went to the most popular place called Dregistan. Здравствуйте. Два взрослых. Это пока будет стоять. Спасибо. Нет? Да, мы опять идем. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Спасибо. Расскажешь? Давай. Ты гид сегодня? Да. Это три медреса. Один построил Тимур, ага. другой построил его внук, а ага. другой построил его сын. Окей, okay, Толя tried to be the guide, but he messed up with the information. He definitely shouldn't troll my channel. So these are indeed three medrasa from left to the right. The first one was built by Ulugbek, Timur's grandson, and is called Ulugbek Medrasa. And two others were built by Yalang Tush Bahadur, who was ruling Samarkand much later than Ulugbek, and are called Tilyakori Medrasa and Sherdor Medrasa. Honestly, they all look very similar, but obviously they have different details and interiors and in general they were built differently they're really big like very very big do kids always run away from their parents The Registan itself is a public square where people gather to hear royal proclamations and the place of public executions also. It is framed by these three madrasas and that's why people call the whole assembly the Registan. The square was the heart of the nation city of Samarkand. Everybody's taking photos here. Uh, they're not for free, obviously, but people are taking photos in national costumes. Так, теперь идем в это здание. These madrasas used to work in the past, there were students studying and nowadays they are full of tourists, so they don't work as madrasa anymore. The name Registan itself means sandy place or desert in Persian. In Tilia Quarry Midrasa, the middle one, there were very rich golden decorations on the walls. And it seems like a part of the building is working as a mosque, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, decorations were stunning, every centimeter of the wall was covered with golden ornaments.
there were also many souvenir shops in all the buildings but I wanted to show you this one specifically that had vintage jewelry from different Uzbekistan regions I think it was quite cute I have a little bit of a mix of beige walls and blue patterns in my head because <laughs> uh, these buildings look very similar and to the cloud camera double bar. Agatha is uh, tired. <laughs> of sightseeing and probably not in the mood a little bit but I promise that we'll buy her something to eat and she's a little bit more happy now she's running away again <laughs> Uluk Beg Medras, I think, was bigger than others and it also had a big yard and there was a museum inside. The reality of traveling with kids. <laughs> the whole building was beautifully decorated with traditional blue ornaments and I really liked colors in the museum, mostly light blue and white walls. Love this pattern, guys. Looks so cute. The museum was obviously about Ulugbek and he was ruling the empire at the beginning of 15th century. He was the grandson of a famous Timur and there were a lot of his contribution to astronomy in this museum. But this is no real, just fantasy. We'll visit his observatory later too in this video. <laughs> there is a closed door, but you know. So, as I said, Registan is huge, beautiful, and definitely worth visiting. On the next day we went to see Hajjad in your mausoleum, which is Saint Daniel uh, the Prophet Daniel mausoleum. 
His grave is there and he's respected by both Muslims and Christians, so his museum is an important place here too in Samarkand. We came uh, there with our local friend because it's quite far from the city center and also it was raining that day, so he gave us a ride. The mausoleum itself is very small, there aren't much things to see except the grave itself, but nature around was very beautiful and it's a very peaceful and quiet place. The grave is very very long, about 18 meters, and there are different legends <laughs> that explain this size, but I'm not going to go into details. The rain was slowly ruining our day, but Agatha had a lot of fun in the water. <laughs> Then we went to Ulugbek Observatory, remember I told you before that he was an important man when it comes to astronomy. His observatory was one of the most important ones in medieval times. It was built in the 1420s and it was huge and had three floors. It was really impressive but was destroyed almost 30 years later and didn't work that much unfortunately. There is just a tiny part of it left as a museum nowadays. Just look how cool it was, there was a small hole in the roof and the sunlight was coming through it and helping with all the measurements and counting and so on. So this small part is all what's left, but you can see the size of the circle and kind of imagine the size of the observatory itself. <laughs> These people with donkeys are just driving big city streets all the time. I can't see anything because of the sun. So um, it's the next day already and today we are going to another like a palace or something like that. And here is a very cute like main square alley little park where people walk and it's a very nice place for some reason next place we visited was my favorite one in the 15th century it was one of the largest and most magnificent mosques in the islamic world it was almost completely ruined by the 20th century but major parts of it were restored during soviet union period and now we can enjoy it as a like museum it was built by famous timur he wanted to build something really gigantic and cool and powerful looking and he wanted to build it very fast and problems with this construction began right away because with technologies they had back then they just couldn't make it the way he wanted and as fast as he wanted and the building started to slowly fall apart only several years later after it was built so peaceful here and so many birds are singing it's not only very sunny today, but also uh, it's like spring, like wind is blowing a little bit, birds are singing. It's so peaceful here and so beautiful. I mean, this, this little garden, <laughs> this little square that they have here is just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Like very, very calm place, nice atmosphere here.
I said it was my favorite one for a very simple reason. It was so peaceful and calm inside. A lot of trees with birds and quietness and in general I love to spend time there. I just like that kind of calm energy they had there. But in general it was quite similar to all the other most we saw before. Quite close to that Bibi Hanum Mosque, there are a couple more places that we've decided to visit. And first one is Hazrat Khizr Mosque. But it's popular nowadays not because it's a mosque, but because uh, now there is a mausoleum of the first president of Uzbekistan, Islam Karimov, who passed away in 2016. So it's quite unusual for most of us to see president's graves looking the similar way as like sultan's and demir's graves look, but that's his mausoleum, so obviously we wanted to see it. Unfortunately, it's prohibited to film there, but you still can see the mausoleum with the grave from the outside. Other beautifully decorated parts of the building belong to the mosque as I got it, but since mausoleum is located right in the center, they just look like something built altogether. Here's a pretty cool elevator. On our 10 minute way to the next destination, we saw a big Jewish cemetery here on the hill. The only thing that I wanted to say is that Samarkand is really big, it has a lot of historical places and also modern places, it's like a huge city. One of the last places we visited was Shahizinde Necropolis, which is also one of the top popular places in Samarkand. It seemed to me that most sites here are related to some dead people, which kind of is not my favorite, but at least they have very beautiful architecture here. So Shahizin, the complex, is a huge necropolis with many small mausoleums that were forming one by one for over eight centuries and now include more than 20 buildings like mausoleums, mosques and others. I could count more than 10 mausoleums there.
there were also some unknown and not very decorated mausoleums, which I decided not to film. One fun situation, guys. We put Agatha on the ground for like 30 seconds <laughs> and she stepped right into the water uh, in the puddle right away uh, in her shoes so now we are trying to make them dry and also to make her feet dry <laughs> because we can't want to go home because of that luckily it's uh, very warm today I don't know how many degrees Celsius but very warm and sunny and I hope your feet will get dry soon <laughs> but it's like always happens <laughs> We found food here. <laughs> so much money. <laughs> like, cost 10,000. 10,000, guys. Вот так дашь? Так надо сделать дашь. Ага, то будет дашь. Спасибо. <laughs> These are local hot dogs and milkshake, strawberry milkshake. <laughs> we came to the big local park. It's quite cute by itself, but we came here for another reason, to see another big site. I think these tigers are a symbol of Samarkand city also. I can't even describe how good <laughs> it feels <laughs> to eat something that taste familiar because we've been here for almost two weeks already and I've been struggling <laughs> a lot with um, national food here. I think it's interesting that young Russians are very used to eating more of an American type of food like burgers, hot dogs, <laughs> McDonald's, uh, pizza, something like that like American style of pizza and this food tastes like something very familiar and it takes like tastes like home <laughs> so yeah it's interesting how cultures mix so we actually went there to see the last place in our trip called Gur Amir Mausoleum or basically the place with Amir Timur's grave and some other local famous people The main building there with the Amir Timur's grave is massively decorated with gold ornaments. The most impressive ornaments I've seen in Samarkand.
I think this was the last place uh, for today and for our summer camp trip in general. I wanted to tell you thank you for watching. I hope you liked uh, walking with us around Samarkand and seeing all these interesting historical places. And I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye.